Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. So in the previous session we have discussed about one normal form that is a third normal form. And in this session we will discuss about a one more normal form that is a BCNF boy scout normal form. BCNF so which is called boy scout normal form. Boy scout normal and usually this BCNF is also known as a 3.5 normal form. So it's also known as 3.5 normal form. So what are the conditions need to satisfy if we want to say the relation is in BCNF. So here are the conditions need to be satisfied. The first one relation should be in 3NF. The relation should be in 3NF. And the second one, the second one, for all functional dependencies, for all functional dependencies, let it be x tends to y. So, x should be primary key primary or not super key super key or candidate key candidate key so for all the functional dependencies let it be x tends to y so it should satisfy that x should be either super key or a candidate key then we can say the relation is in bcnf Right? So first the relation should be in 3NF. So then only we have to go with the second condition. If the relation is, is in 3NF, we can go with this one. Okay. If any relation is in BCNF, we can say the relation is in 3NF. But if any relation is in 3NF, we can't say that relation is in BCNF. Right? So this is the stronger than the 3NF. So BCNF is a stronger than the 3NF and still uh, it will reduce uh, some sort of uh, anomalies and uh, redundancies which are available in the 3NF, right? So, uh, we'll, first, uh, first you have to know what is the 3NF and uh, how this uh, uh, relation satisfies the 3NF. So, I will completely give the link of playlist in the description section, go through that. So, get an idea about the functional dependencies, what is the functional dependency and how the relation should be in 3NF and everything and then uh, you will understand this session very clearly, right? So, uh, let us take one example and I will show you how we have to convert the uh, 3NF to the BCNF, okay? How we can achieve the BCNF, right? So, let us take this example, consider this relation. So, this relation consists of uh, three attributes that is a student, course and a tutor, right? So here uh, we are having a different relation. So first we have we have to check whether this relation is in 3NF or not. So if it is in 3NF, then only we have to proceed with the BCNF. So what is the 3NF? So there should not be transitive dependencies for the non-prime attributes. So first we need to find the non-prime attributes for, for this particular relation. And in order, to, in order to find the non-prime attributes, we have to find the prime attributes. In order to find the prime attributes, so we have to find the candidate keys of this relation. So for finding the candidate keys, first we have to write down the functional dependencies because even though if we want to check for BCNF, we need to know the functional dependencies. So first let us see the functional dependencies. Let us write down all the possibility, possible dependencies and we'll check whether which are the valid functional dependencies and which are not valid functional dependencies. So I will represent this student as S, course as C and tutor as T. Right. So first, let us uh, write down the functional dependencies. So one possibility, S yes, tends to C, S yes, tends to T. That means student course, student tutor, and also course tutor. And one more one, S yes, 
student comma course tends to tutor student comma tutor gives the course and uh, course and tutor gives the student so these are the possibilities first we will check whether uh, which are the valid functional dependencies so these are the possible functional dependencies first coming to the student to course according to our uh, definition of functional dependency consider two random tuples and if there is a common x value the corresponding y values should also be same then only we can say it as a functional dependency so student can determine the course so student can determine the course consider the first one and second one 101 it gives a java and here 101 gives a python so one student we are having a multiple courses so we can't consider this one so x value is same but y value is different x value is same this is x value this is y value x value is same for two tuples but we are having a different y values so this is not a valid functional dependency coming to the student tutor here also you can see x value student and y value total 101 sandeep and 101 sarvi so this is also not possible this is also not possible so course tends to tutor so java sandeep java sandeep yes but what about the thing python sarathi and python sarathi so this is also not possible okay let us assume with the t tends to c okay so here also you can see c tends to yes t tends to yes so if you know course we can get a student details so for java 101 java 102 this is not possible tutor tends to student tutor sandeep 101 sandeep 102 this is also not possible and tutor to course so sandeep java sandeep java saradi python and sathvik python so there is different x values but same y values that's not no problem okay for different x different x values we can get the same y values but for the same x values we need to get the same y value so this is possible this is a valid functional dependency this is a valid functional dependency so coming to here student and course give a tutor student and course 101 java so is there any repetition for this one 101 java no so 102 101 python there is no repetition 102 java no repetition 102 python no repetition there is no repetition on x value so obviously the, it will be functional dependent next s tends to t gives a c that means a student along with the tutor gives a course student along with the tutor 101 sandeep is there any 101 sandeep here 102 sandeep so that is different 101 sarabhi so there is here 101 sandeep this is a different so there is no duplicates so this is also possible coming to the course and tutor gives the student course and tutor gives the student so course and tutor java sandeep here also java sandeep okay so course and tutor java sandeep and java sandeep both we are having a duplicates but here y values are 101 and 102 both are different so this doesn't form the functional dependence so here some valid functional dependencies are so yes comma c that means a student along with the course can determine the tutor and a student along with the tutor can determine the course and a tutor alone can determine the course so these are the a few functional dependencies we can we can say that these are the functional dependencies for this particular relation right so once you just practice so write down all the possibilities and check out that one so you'll get these three as a functional dependencies so the first step is we got the functional dependencies the next one we have to check whether the relation is in 3nf or not because for checking for bcnf first we need to check whether the relation is in 3nf or not then only we can go with the bcnf so what is a 3nf so if for a functional dependency that i mean for all the non-prime attributes there should not be there is a transitivity functional dependency so for that we have to find the candidate keys what are the candidate keys so here in order to find the candidate keys right on the procedure in the previous session we have uh, solved many problems to finding the super keys and the candidate keys so i will post the link of complete playlist in the description in that playlist you can find the video and just visit that video and uh, you will be understanding this concept right so first so student course tutor will give all the three 
so this is a closure you can say this is a closure right so from the functional dependencies if you know t that means if you know the tutor we can get the course so you can just remove the course so student along with the tutor can determine student tutor and if you know tutor we can get a course right so is there any possibility to reduce this one no from this functional dependency there is no if you know student and course we can get a tutor but here there is no course only we are having a student okay so this is the one candidate key so one super key one super key because by using the student and tutor we are getting all the three attributes but we can't say that this is a candidate key so we need to check all the possibilities find out the s closure and the t closure so for s closure if you know yes we can determine yes and if you know yes alone we can't determine any other so this is not a candidate key and t plus t plus so that means if you know t we can determine t if you know t we can determine c and if you know both t and c we can't determine any, any other so this is also not a super key so we can determine we can say that s and t are the candidate key so here i will write a candidate key so one candidate key is student and uh, tutor so we can't say student and tutor are the same candidate keys so we have to check whether these are the prime attributes okay the prime attributes the prime attributes are s comma t we need to check whether these prime attributes are uh, on the right hand side of the rela any relation or not so we are having one uh, prime attribute as a right hand side of for the functional dependency so replace this one with this one so you can replace this one so yes comma in place of t we can give yes comma c which we can yes is already there so we can give c right and again find out the closure whether we can find out or not yes comma c if you know a student and a course we can get a uh, t so this is a super key we can say this is a super key and minimize this one so yes so in, by using yes we can get only yes by using c we can get a c and if by knowing c we only the c can be determined so this is this is this is not a super key so yes comma c again it's a candidate key again find out the prime attributes the prime attributes are yes comma c so find out whether these prime attributes have, are residing on the right hand side yes we are having both the things so consider any one so consider the third one so replace this c with uh, t so s t so s t is already a candidate key student and a tutor along with the candidate key so you can stop here so our relation is having a uh, two candidate keys so just go the procedure by following the previous uh, sessions so you can understand the procedure so uh, from that procedure by following that pro uh, procedure we have find out the candidate keys are s comma t and s comma c and what we have to check whether the non prime attributes what are the non prime attributes so i'll write here so non prime attributes are the uh, attributes which are not available in the, the candidate key so you can see from this one we are getting all the things there is no prime attributes non prime attributes okay no non prime attributes so obviously there will be no 3 3 and i mean it follows the 3 and there is no transitivity dependency for the given relation because we are not having any non prime attributes all these are the prime attributes yes t and c we are having the three uh, attributes and all the three are available in the candidate key so there is no prime non prime attributes so in order to check whether the relation is in 3 and f we have to check there should be no transitivity dependency for a non prime attribute but here we are not having any non prime attributes obviously the relation will be in 3 and f so uh, no non prime attribute so a relation is in 3 and f now we have to check for the bcnf whether it is in bcnf or not so what we have to do we have to check whether if for all the functional dependencies x should be the super key or a prime or a candidate key so if for this functional dependency you can see s comma c which is a candidate key right s comma t which is a candidate key right and here t tends to c here it is x and it is y so x is not a super key or a part of candidate key oh sorry it's not a candidate key not a part okay it's not a candidate key so we have to so here you can see t tends to c 
सो टी इज नॉट ए कैंडिडेट की कैंडिडेट की सो रिलेशन is not in b c n f so if if for example for these two things s comma c tends to t so here it is x comma y x tends to y so x should be a super key or a candidate key okay super key or a candidate key yes s comma c is a candidate key c so this is a valid second one s comma t tends to c so here you can see this is x and this is y so x is again it's a super key or candidate key s comma t is a candidate key yes so coming to this one x comma y and x is not a candidate key obviously we can say the relation is not in bcnf so if the relation is not in bcnf we have to decompose the relation okay we can have to decompose the relation so that it it uh, satisfies the bcnf so how the relation should be decomposed and this relation can be divided into two two relations so one with student and a tutor so student 101 sandeep 101 sarathi 102 sandeep and 102 satvik and the second relation course and tutor so course is java python and python so java with a sandi python with saradi and python with satvik so this is a relation 1 and relation 2 so here in this relation we found the one functional dependency would which doesn't satisfies the bcnf condition so if any for all the functional dependencies x tends to y x should be a super key or a candidate key which violates this one so that's why we have to decompose the thing to different sub relations so this is called the bcnf so it is somewhat uh, stronger than the trnf third norm so if any relation which satisfies till this bcnf then we can say the data scheme that database scheme is a very good design okay the design of a scheme is very good right so hope you understood about this bcnf and uh, if you are having any doubts regarding this one feel free to post your doubts in the comment section definitely i will try to clarify all your doubts if you really enjoyed my session like my session share my session with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel thanks for watching thank you very much